Nam yo honing gecko, 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 nam yo honing Hi, I'm Margaret, and this is the channel where we take Buddhist philosophy and practice and apply it to the problems of everyday life. And today our topic is. Do you feel as though your prayers aren't being answered? I'm going to discuss six areas for reflection when you feel that that's the case. So number one, are you ready to receive the answer to your prayers? If you're chanting for a big dream, there has to be a change in your thought and feeling nature. You have to be willing to grow into the answer so that you'll be big enough in consciousness to accept it. The universe is orderly, and the results will only come when you're ready to receive them. Think about it. If you look around, the universe does things in a certain way and doesn't skip steps. For example, first a seed is planted. Then there's a period of gestation before the plant appears. And for a kind of dramatic example, the bamboo tree grows an inch a year for four years while expanding and deepening its root system underground, out of sight. And then in the fifth year, it grows to 80 feet. So determine, have you planted the seed, your vision? Have you done the work to get ready for the result? Laid the groundwork, learned the skills, taken the necessary actions. And be honest with yourself about this. Ask yourself, do I actually expect an answer? And could I really accept it if it came? You know, sometimes we think we want something, but when we envision it actually happening, we feel reluctant. We wonder if we could actually handle it, or perhaps it doesn't feel quite right for one reason or another. If you're not sure, chant for faith. Pray for the perfect solution and release the problem to the universe. Number two, have you made a decision, a commitment, that this goal is going to happen? If you're chanting for a big dream, have you made a real commitment that this is going to happen no matter what? Or are you hedging your bets, not really believing it can happen? If you're hedging your bets, you have a hope, not a determination. And the energy of what you're projecting to the universe is quite different, more wishy-washy rather than strong and determined. A decision is important because the universe doesn't respond to hopes and indecision. Until that determination happens, the universe can't bring you the ideas and resources needed to fulfill the goal. But you know, that's not so easy as it sounds because that decision has to be made when you can't see the path and you have no idea of how you're gonna find the resources to do what you need to do. You must trust the universe and stop looking to your circumstances to decide what you can do. This isn't easy. It means going against the training of a lifetime. The third, Look within, or have you looked within, and chanted to remove the block. Now, we know from the law of the simultaneity of cause and effect and the law of oneness of life and its environment that the block is coming from within us. The simultaneity of cause and effect says that when we think, speak, or act, we're setting a seed for a future effect in our life. So if we're dwelling on what we don't want, our worries, for example, we're setting the cause for future worries. Better to chant for what we do want. Bill Aiken, former SGI USA Vice General Director, says in his 2003 World Tribune article, quote, on oneness of life and its environment, quote, 
rather than there being one static environment that we living beings are all born into. Every environment is uniquely customized, tailored to suit each of us according to the state of our inner lives. They reflect our past causes and include all of the circumstances in our lives. So in a sense, we're all going around with our personal universe, one that extends from the inner depths of our hearts outward to all of the phenomena of our surroundings." Unquote. It's never the law that isn't working. The law is always working perfectly. The block is always within us. We just can't be too rigid in our outlook on life. We have to be willing to change the inner. So look within and pray to understand what's blocking you. Ask yourself, have I gotten an idea I did not want to hear or that I've dismissed for one reason or another? Because when you pray, you've started a dialogue with the universe. So pay attention to anything that comes to you on the subject and act on it. You won't see further than the next step, but when you take that step, then you'll be able to see further. Or ask yourself, am I so attached to looking at life a certain way that I'm just unwilling to change my views? If I can't change, my circumstances aren't going to change. Four, are you binding the problem to you? Remember, the experiences and circumstances of our lives are our curriculum. They may not be what we prefer, but they're there for us to grow spiritually. And the following behaviors will bind a problem to you. Are you dwelling on criticism and condemnation? Are you resenting or hating someone who's abused or persecuted you or betrayed you? It's natural to feel this way, but spiritually, when you hold on to resentment and hatred, the person being punished is you. It doesn't punish the other person. It's like holding on to a hot coal and expecting the other person to be burned. When we're attached to talking about a problem, we're projecting that to the universe and the problem persists. We've all heard the old saw, what we resist, persists. When we give up our resentment, we're not accepting abusive behavior or saying it's all right. It does not mean being a doormat or having to subject oneself to toxic relationships. We can always set, set boundaries with those. We don't have to be around people who are abusing us. But letting our resentments go removes a block in us so that we can release that energy to experience and attract our dreams. It changes our lives. The other person may never change, but you will be freed. We free ourselves. It's a shift in perception to find a new, more positive way to see what we've experienced. So chant for the willingness to see things differently and open up your life. Number five, would your prayer harm someone? If your prayers aren't being answered, you might want to reflect on whether your prayer would hurt someone else. And finally, are you praying daily? Are you praying sporadically or seriously every day? Praying a little bit here, a little bit there, doesn't generate the spiritual energy to manifest your desires. You want to set your goal and reflect about it daily and be persistent. And don't dig up your goal to see how it's doing. Trust the universe to bring it about in its own good time when you're ready. And finally, pray for the wisdom, courage, and strength to live one day at a time. Stop straining and relax. In summary, we've discussed, number one, are you ready to receive the answer? Number two, have you made the decision, a commitment, that your goal is going to happen no matter what? Number three, have you looked within and chanted to remove any book? 
Number four, are you binding the problem to you? Number five, would your hair, prayer harm someone else? And number six, are you praying daily? I want to thank all of you for your questions and comments. You've been very helpful in allowing me to develop topics for this blog. People have contacted me asking questions. If you want Buddhist guidance, I answer questions by email at margaret at margaretblaine.com. This is my avocation. For those of you who've asked to actually talk with me, I have a life coaching business where I work with people who are feeling stuck to discover what's blocking them from creating a life they love. If you think you're ready to move forward, go to margaretblaine.coach forward slash strategy and sign up for a 45 minute complimentary session. We'll look at where you are now, where you'd love to be and determine the next best step to keeping you, to getting you there. I want to keep my Buddhist work and my business separate. Thank you all for listening and I'll see you again the first Thursday of next month.